Hello everyone. Most of you might be well aware of the calculations behind the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues. But the real life applications of the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues are not well, very well understood or linked to. So that's what we'll be discussing about today. I will start with explaining what are eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And next, I'm going to show you a visual demonstration of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And finally, I'll discuss about the real life application. Let's first analyze the product of a matrix A and a vector X. Let me illustrate this with a simple example. I have taken A as 2 by 2 matrix as shown and we shall consider two different cases for X. In case 1, X is taken as 1, 1 and note that AX will also be a vector. I have plotted them in a graph for easy understanding and interpretation. Now, what is this graph telling you? Do you see that the resultant vector has been scaled and rotated as compared to X? So, you multiplied a matrix and a vector and you got the resultant to be scaled and rotated. Let's now see what case 2 has to tell us. X is taken as 1, 2 here and do you see the difference? The resultant is scaled but not at all rotated. A vector that undergoes pure scaling without any rotation is known as the eigenvector corresponding to that matrix and the scaling factor is known as the eigenvalue. And here it will be phi, which means that the resultant is phi times that of the x. And a quick question for you. Does this definition hold good for a complex case? Just uh, think about it. Let me dig this further. We know that ax equal to phi comma 10 for this case. Let me take phi out of this equation. So we get something like this. And we know this corresponds to x. Let me replace that by x and we get finally ax equal to phi x and we know phi is a scalar. Let me generalize it by putting a lambda here and do you recognize this? This is the famous uh, eigenvalue equation that you uh, see in most of the textbooks. Let me quickly summarize this. There is a vector x such that the resultant ax is only scaled by a factor of lambda. In that case, x is the eigenvector and your lambda is the eigenvalue. Let's apply our understanding of scaling and no rotation to a much more realistic case. Here I have a cylindrical object for your visual demonstration. You can see that I have drawn two vectors namely x1 and x2. x1 is aligned to the axis of the cylinder and x2 is at roughly at an angle of 45 degrees. And now we will try to understand what happens after we do the operation a into x1 or a into x2. Now the matrix A will come from my twisting action. So after I twist this object closely observe x1 and x2 and see what we obtain as a into x. So observe x1 initially. So it was initially horizontal, now it is being rotated and scaled. Try to see it again. Let's do the same thing for x2. Now place your attention on x2. Do you see this? It is clearly visible that it is just scaling in place and there is no rotation. I can also twist the other way around. The same thing that is happening. Scaling and no rotation. And hence from our understanding we know that x2 is the eigenvector and x1 is not. And let's see where this concept is being used in a real world application. The twisting that we saw generally happens in your axle or uh, the drive shaft of an automobile. In some sense the eigenvalue problem is used to design these components. Thank you very much for your attention.